If I had a, a human orange gummy peanut running the league like Roger Goodell, that makes a lot of sense to me because yeah. that's what that dude is. So, I mean, he doesn't know what the hell's going on. No. Bring back Tagliabu or whatever the <laughs> whatever his name was. <laughs> my overpriced dump of an apartment in who the hell knows Connecticut. Thoughts from the Bench presents The Vault. Hello friends, welcome back. With me as always is a gentleman of the game and a certified goon, Mr. Benny Buckets. How's it going, sir? It's a very tranquil opening. Um, yeah. So... I think it set the mood for for a very uh, calm day today, and, and mm-hmm. I'm I'm okay with that. And for that intro, I'll give you a, a little clap nice. here. Nice, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah well, we'll get we'll get into why in a second. I'm sure if I'm sure you could probably guess the theme just based on that. But uh, we're we all know what's about to give us chills up our spine while watching. Besides March Madness, because that's already electric by itself, right? Um. But there's something to be said about hearing Jim Nance's voice on a CBS broadcast talking about the Masters. There's nothing yes, sir. Like it. So um, we will we'll get into it in a sec. Benny, how's it going? It's uh, it's going, man. Slow and steady. Not winning the race, but we're here. How about yourself? Um, I'm I'm good. I'm good. I uh. Found a house, I think, today in Pittsburgh. So that's that's let's cool. go. Um, let's go. Which is nice. Which is nice. Thank you. Um, and then on top of that, too, I saw the Batman this weekend, which was I did as well. Phenomenal. I did as well. What, what what's your I, opinion on it? I think it was okay. Really? I think it was okay. Why is that? Um. First of all, uh, there was not enough action for it to be that long. There's a lot of the lot length, of build uh, I can agree with you on 100%. Um, Robert Pattinson, good Batman, terrible Bruce Wayne. Um, and I liked that it was very realistic. Like this was the first Batman that was like, like out of any superhero movie, this is the one that made the most sense. Is like this could happen in in Mm -hmm. real life right um but it was more about like a serial killer aspect than it was the batman and like i kind of feel like yes i like the realism of it but at the same time superhero movies are supposed to be an escape from reality so it was like i don't know it was just too out of the vein of i guess what i'm used to Mm -hmm. um but uh and then like uh I don't want to spoil anything for people who are going to watch this and haven't seen it, but there was something they alluded to at the end that annoyed me is, is like, again, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like do, do something different, go in a different direction. If you're picking up what I'm putting down Mm -hmm. Uh, again, I I don't want to spoil for anybody, but I don't know. I'm not saying it was bad. I just don't think it was a five-star movie. Right. Okay. So, what I'll say is, so I've been obsessed with Batman since I was a little kid. Like, obsessed. Yeah, I, my favorite superhero, yeah. Like, seeing all the movies, all the animated movies, all the TV shows. Mm-hmm. Read, I have, like, five issues, or five graphic Batman graphic novels. Like, I'm super, super into Batman. Um, what I'll say about it is, it is the most comic, it's... It relates to the comics more than literally any other Batman they've ever done, and in the fact that it, they do go to the detec- the detective side, and they said that they were going to, and that's why I went into it knowing, like I had read about it, and I went into it knowing that it was not going to be Christopher Nolan's Batman. But so, oh, and I'm I'm not saying it needed to be Christopher yeah. Nolan's Batman. It just uh, I don't know, like um, I I feel like they they. 
added stuff, but it was like you could have added it without taking something away. And it was just like, I don't know. And like Alfred was supposed to be more young and like, I don't know, not yeah. your typical See, Alfred. I, I like, um, I love, I love uh, Andy Circus. So I, I, I didn't really care. That's the thing. Like, yeah, Andy, I, I do love Andy Circus. The length, I will agree with you. There's definitely, there were some things that I think they could have cut out. Um, or, I, or like, just if you're going to be on screen that long, like maximize it. Like, mm. I just feel like there was a lot of build up or like dead time that that didn't like scenes that were just too long that we got what we needed to in two minutes, but it was five minutes. You know what I mean? Like out of the scene. So yeah. I don't know. I, I'm not trying to be a pessimist about it. It was still a very good movie. Yeah. I just it wasn't what I was expecting because I had people telling me that this was going to change my life. And this well, was one of the best superhero movies of all time. And I who was saying that? Remotely put that up there. A lot of people. There, there's a lot of people. Yeah. Um, okay, that's like weird. That. See, that's weird. Yeah. And, and, okay. Yeah. I would never tell. I, I, all I've been saying to people is that it is really good, and it is a completely different movie. And they tried to make it different. It is a completely different movie than the Dark Knight trilogy. They d- and they did that on purpose, and that was very apparent. I think. Now, Robert Pattinson. One of the things that I had a complaint about was his hair. I just he didn't have to look. The way he did, if he would have just literally just well, had the way a he looked haircut, throughout the whole movie, yeah, I don't know. I think even like his style throughout the whole movie and his mannerisms, like so it, I don't know. I just never expected Bruce Wayne to be a sappy bitch. You're a fucking rich millionaire. Sorry, yeah, you're you're a rich billionaire or whatever that's supposed to be, you know, the the son of these people. I just I don't know, man. It just it seemed like. It was way too melodramatic, and obviously, Batman is a dark character, and Bruce Wayne deals with a lot, like the the true origin of the character. But it was just like sappy teenager, like it was. And I tried not to hold it against him. Okay, I really mm-hmm. did, but I I was watching Dude from Twilight be Batman, and it was like I I just I don't know. He just it was the same sappy BS that I've seen him in everything else I've seen him in, and it was like okay, you're a cool Batman. But I want to punch Bruce Wayne in the testicles. Like yeah. I was just not. I, yeah. W- what I'll also say too is this is so, and this is why they're gonna make more. Obviously, if if you saw the end, they're gonna make more. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. What this is the first Batman that you kind of see like a like a character arc from the start of a movie to the end, if that makes sense. So he does change through the movie. And I think what they're gonna try to do, everything I've been hearing, is he's the next few movies he's gonna learn. That, hey, I got to put on the face of a billionaire. Yeah, even like even Christian Bale as Batman, you know, as Bruce Wayne, he was not what everyone thought he was. Like Bruce Wayne was a character, right? And like, yeah. th- so I think they're gonna push that as I. That's why I think everyone needs to calm down, let it, let them breathe a little bit. Like he did it. They did it this way on purpose. Like he was literally just starting out, just like in some of the comics, like literally just starting out where he is just super serious and like he i mean he's just kurt cobain and that they they literally tried to base it on someone like kurt cobain they've literally come out and said it so that's why i i'm not gonna go on a whole rant but like i think they did a good job for what they were trying to go for if that makes sense yeah so yeah it was a little yeah. long though so i'll get i'll, I'll get I, that <laughs> I need I need to see their future products, but as of right now, I don't know. It wasn't even the best superhero movie I've seen this year. So yeah. I just uh, I, I mean, it was good. It's mm-hmm. just I feel like it was built up so much that I was like, you know, when it was over, I was like, ah, okay, yeah. You know, I didn't really know what to do with it, so I don't know. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, we can uh, we'll get into it. Ben, are you sipping on any beer tonight? I am. I am. I'm. I'm running it back with the PBR. Nice. Uh, just. Just. Uh, it's. It's a nice sip and smooth American beer, and uh, one that I think I would potentially find on draft in an event that we're going to be talking about here soon. Absolutely. So I got the champagne of beers. Coors Banquet. Fitting, I think. For well, I think Miller about. High Life is the champagne of beers. Uh, well, but this, whatever. Okay. But Coors, the banquet beer, is banquet my beer. favorite product. Yeah is my favorite product of course. So, um, yeah, Um, that is, uh, that, that's my favorite thing that they produce. Yeah. All right. 
Ben, let's get into it. We're going to start with the ad read. Uh, this week, this week's topic is uh, brought to you by Marshall Fitness. Uh, Will Marshall, good friend of the show, uh, he will work with anyone at any at any time, anywhere, from anywhere, uh, on anything that they want to get accomplished fitness-wise. Will is a personal trainer that uh, does everything online, over the phone, uh, consults, you know, over FaceTime, over the phone, using the My Fitness Pal app. App. He really helps you hone in on what you want to do, what you want to accomplish as far as your fitness goals go, uh, while also fitting it into your everyday schedule. Um, Will, like I said, I've known Will for, for years. Um, really good dude, really knows what he's doing. Do you want an athlete? Um, and he just, it, the best time to start is now, so you might as well reach out to him, uh, see how he can help you. Even if it's not you trying to transform your life and you're just trying to lose a few pounds for vacation. He's your guy. So go check Will out on Facebook and Instagram. The best time to start is now. Benny, this week we're doing golf attire. If you couldn't tell by my intro, my Jim Nance uh, impersonation, we're doing golf attire this week. One, The first time that we've done this, the first time that we've touched this topic, but there's, I think there's a lot to go over here. As, as a golfer and as a golf fan, I love what guys put on 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 some of these weekends absolutely i i think there's a uh there's like an underrated style aspect to going out there because it is it, it so golf takes a lot of skill but it is more of a leisure sport so mm -hmm. you can look good while playing the game so i think we've got uh we've got quite a few really good entries here today yeah uh so let's tee off oh okay Damn, let's... the puns are coming. The puns are coming today. Let's go. Okay, I'm coming in hot. I'm starting off with my guy. Okay, he's not actually my guy, but Bryson DeChambeau at the 2020 Masters. Uh, this was a fit that a few golfers actually wore, um, but I just I like this picture of Bryson because it shows everything together. Smalls, I actually was thinking of you with this pick because all the navy and white. Mm. Um, that dark blue and white, I thought that you might like it with almost like a Penn State vibe. Yep. Um, but I really like the solid blue pants with the solid blue shirt, but it's not just like a crayon. The accents of the white popping off in the shirt offset it enough. And then with the navy hat with the bold white P on there, um, really makes for a well put together outfit, I think, on the golf course. Um, and it's one of those like I hate when people are wearing the super skin tight stuff, but to where it's at least form fitting enough and you know you know the the rigmarole here it's typically a polo shirt mm -hmm. and long pants in a hat right but there's so much that you can do with that because it's it's simple but it's so easy to diversify right and uh and i think that this is just a cold solid look it's very plain but it's very stylish like you could go and golf with this and then go out to dinner wearing the same thing you know like it's not just a golf fit but it's it's breathable and it's stylish enough to where you look good smacking them around. And if there's any place for you to look good while you're golfing, the Masters is like the number one destination. Yeah. Um, I'll start off by saying Bryson DeChambeau is a narc and he is my least favorite golfer out there and will be for years because wow. he's such a nerd. Dude, he's such a narc. He he's just a nerd. He complains about everything. Oh, I want to use math to win. Dude, just, just I don't know. I'm Team Brooks all day. Uh, the whole Bro Kepka versus DeChambeau thing I think is hilarious. But, like, Bryson is yeah, just I a nerd. Yeah, I got to I gotta say, I think they're both children. It's golf. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, like that's like, oh, man, I'm really mad at this guy that beat me in cornhole. You know? Like, buddy, I – I don't know. I, I get that in there should be gamesmanship, right? In professional sports, I think that's got to happen everywhere. But I just feel like, you know, there was a rivalry for a long time between Tiger and Phil, right? And there wasn't that kind of like middle school drama. So Bryson and Brooks kind of irritate me to that point. But they both still can step out and, and have a good day of golf and a good day of looking good while they're out there golfing. So that's why this is just the easiest picture for me to put up. But to be fair, I don't follow either of them that much because of the whole weird 
Yeah. I don't like you. You don't like me. I'm going to write notes to my friends about you. Think. Yeah. Yeah. I, Brooks, at least I've heard Brooks talk about golf and interviews and he's like, yeah, I just, I try not to think about it. I just kind of hit it and try to get it close. That's kind of attitude. I think that, that's funny to me, like a professional golfer that doesn't really care that much about golf. It's kind of why I like Brooks. I just think that Bryson DeChambeau is the complete opposite or he's just trying to crank the ball and get the right, the perfect amount of to- pounds per Newton torque or whatever. So he gets <laughs> the right spin so he can get the right angle going down. Dude, I, and his hat, not in this picture. Luckily, he did not do it for the Masters in 2020. But th- that that freaking cap that he always wears, oh, my God, I just I just want to hit him, dude. And I feel like everyone should want to hit him. But that's just me. I do like this. I do like this outfit, though. <laughs> So, uh, the Pum- Puma, right. Puma has some solid looks. I'll give him that. Dude, Puma low key is really getting out there in the golf game. Yeah. Um, I, they've tried to crack, I think almost every sport other than football. Mm-hmm. Like they've, they've really tried to, to get themselves out there and, uh, probably like the, the closest they came was there's quite a few like soccer kits and stuff that, that they've been able to supply, but I'll tell you what their golf game. Pretty good, dude. Yeah. Pretty, yeah. pretty good. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, the ups to, ups to Puma, and I think you're actually going to see more of that. So, cool. Yeah, you will. Um, all right, so let's go to my first pick. Uh, all going, time. Yeah. Going all time. This myself. is me. Yeah. This is me as a golfer. That's what it is. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, this is the – so if you don't know who this is, shame on you. But this is the guy that makes Rex Quando – from Napoleon Dynamite, look like a look like a chump. All right, John Daly is an absolute legend of the game. Grip it, rip it, grip it, and sip it. The guy just tries to hit it long, dude. And now he has a he has a bunch of different looks where he, he is really one of the only guys that goes wild with the pants. And he has some wild looks out there, but this one is just so John Daly. It's not even funny, like. The guy that just goes out on the, on the course somehow in a PGA event somehow is able to wrangle up a golf cart, which is not allowed in professional golf. You're not allowed to do it, but he seems to do it all the time. He always has a golf cart while smoking a Bogue, you know, pro- probably having a few sips of, of a Bud Light out on the course, dude. This guy is a legend of the game, and the pants are all time. This was back in 2017. It was his first win on the senior tour that year um, since joining the senior tour the year before, actually. And he's just, he's one of those guys that, like, Ben, I don't know if you disagree, but I'm going to put two guys on the list of athletes I really want to have a beer with John Daly and Phil Kessel. Those are the two guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah, dude. I, I feel like because John Daly. I'll be honest. Okay. So golf in general, and I like golf. I, I actually watch golf. I play, even though I'm terrible. Um, like I'm talking dog water bad, but, uh, I, I like golf, but it is a game for, how do I put this politely? Um, at least in the pros, very proper individuals. Okay. And this was like the first guy who I don't even want to say was like the bad boy of golf, but just like the cool, I don't give a swear jar shit about um, anything other than coming out, doing my thing my way and in golfing, not to everyone else's standards, but my own. Mm -hmm. He came out. He's not a clean cut guy. He's not a fit guy. He, He doesn't mince words. He is just unapologetically himself no filter in his actions in his words in his mentality dude is just like a guy my first actual ever set of golf clubs were john daly golf clubs uh and and anytime i'm out there my friends have referred to me that i'm the john daly of the group i'm just obviously much less of a talent than he is um because that's the thing the dude is still a very good golfer yeah but he's just like this wild mullet having gut hanging out diesel american diesel diesel cigarette smoking beer chugging son of a bitch out on the golf course and to me like anybody who knows me like you guys is my friends and then people who watch the show like who have known me enough at this point know that like this is the type of guy i can resonate with 
And the outfit here is just all time. I mean, this is this is like pure John Daly, you know, sticking to his roots, but also being a little flashy. I, I love it, dude. This is a perfect pick. Yeah, I would say John Daly and Tiger Woods were really the ones that came along and like changed everything. Like they were the first yeah. of their kind. Um, and, and yeah, like he didn't come from like a proper rich background. Not that some, some of these guys are, they're just athletes. That Not that they all her. do. Yeah, I'm, yeah. yeah I know what you're saying. saying like, yeah. It's, it's more just like they all fit the prototype. Of Especially what a pro back in that day. Play. I think it's a little different now. But especially back yeah. in that day, for sure, he was he was that guy. Like he was different, and he he was like like you said, he, he was unapologetic. Dude, and his son golf's now in junior yeah. tours, and he's a stud too. And yeah, I dude. like you can already tell. Like I, you could just have this kid randomly walk in front of me, and I'm like, oh, you're John Daly's kid. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like the, you know he's gonna be exactly the same. But kids got talent too, so John Daly's keeping that spirit running through the family. Yeah, dude, Diesel, absolute stud. The pant, these pants are fantastic. Um, I need them. Yeah, dude. I need them. Seriously. Um. All right. So Ben, what do you got for pick two? All right. So brace yourselves here, Ricky Fowler. Okay, he was supposed to be one of the next big things in golf okay and unfortunately he didn't become that but he has become a pretty solid golfer he had the spotlight on him at such a young early age okay because of his talent before he was going on tours but also he was known for kind of dressing like a jackass i mean he would look like a highlighter he had like a bright i'm talking like neon orange head to toe hat pants shirt glove whatever same with different colors he had a pink outfit like that a a neon green outfit like that a blue outfit like that and he was just like a human highlighter as this young kid then he started growing up and he started cleaning himself up and like this okay you might even say that the pants are flashy i love this all put together it's kind of got like a tennessee volunteers vibe that he's got going on here but i love the gray with the white and orange stripes that go up in the hat to match uh and then the pants i i think this is odd but like the white belt with the orange pants is such a nice touch to it because the orange is only an accent in the hat and the shirt that then going down to the pants, it's a nice solid color, but it's not too much. It's not everything. I just really dig the color scheme and I've always rooted for Ricky Fowler. He's always been like subpar, no pun intended. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think that he's, he's come a long way. This was in 2017, which I think around 2015, 2016, he started going from young boy wonder to adult golfer. You know, and I think he's truly stepped into him to his self as a pro in the last, I, I'd probably say five years or so. Um, but uh, I've, I've always been a fan. Uh, he hasn't been super successful, but truly, I just like the guy. And I like that his style has developed from trying to be flashy to truly just trying to have a well put together look while he's out there. And this is arguably my favorite that he's thrown together. Yeah. So I see this. And uh, Ben, you might appreciate this. I just think Tyler Young, because Young would always wear the orange Puma golf shirt every time I golf with him. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Shout out Ty Young. Shout out Ty uh, Young. Um, he also, I think he also had the the which it's Puma and Cobra. Cobra Cobra is the club manufacturer, um, but they yeah. have that that uh, partnership, or one owns the other. I, I kind of forget which one, but. Um, Young actually has, I'm pretty sure, or at least he used to, the orange Cobra driver. So like this just reminds me of Young, and I think he, I think he was a Ricky Fowler fan too. Um, but that Ricky, would make sense. Yeah, I, I've always rooted for Ricky Fowler, and you can always, Ricky, he's in the mix a lot, and he's all, yeah. he always he's a good dude. Like he seems yeah. like a pretty good dude too. Mm-hmm. Like. He's not one of those like douchey golfers. Like he's very humble and he seems to just kind of be like mixing it up with everybody. Mm-hmm. I like to do. Yeah. And uh, I, so, you know, growing up, um, so my dad was a big golfer. Um, and when I was growing up, pretty much, I, I think I had two or three jobs in a row really growing up where I only worked on golf courses. So, like, I kind of grew up in high school around golf a lot. And like, what, so, Anytime, either – so if I could, I would get a white belt. I remember I had a few white belts for when I went out golf. It's a good look, dude. 
It like it's it is. Old. It's a nice little accent. Like you can't wear that with jeans though, no. or like no, 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 slacks no. or golf. whatever. Like it, it's got to be for golf. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, the the orange that is kind of Ricky's thing, but like it's it's nice, dude. Like I think he always looks good in it. Like pretty much across. Yeah, and I think that he he made it more like. I don't even want to say subtle because the pants are bold and everything, but it's mm-hmm. not so in your face. Like you look at that and you're like, oh, that's aesthetically pleasing enough to where like, I don't want to beat the hell out of that guy. Like I look at him and I'm like, ah, I don't know if I could do it, but hey man, good for you. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. um, but yeah, dude, I, I, and I was trying to figure out of a way to put Ricky Fowler on here without him looking like a jackass. Mm-hmm. And I found a couple that I really liked and this was probably my fave. Yeah. Um, yeah, and the uh, yeah, Ricky Fowler's awesome. He dude, for being such a small guy, he can crank the ball. That this dude knows dude, how the to drive. power that he generates. Crazy it is nuts, dude. It, it's like I don't know, he's friggin' Mighty Mouse or something with the club, just whacking that thing. Crazy. But uh, yeah, dude, I'll, always been a big Ricky fan, and I I hope I hope he continue. I hope he like makes a, a really long career, you yeah. know. But I just want to get one. I just want him to get one. Yeah. Just get get a major, dude. I just want him to get a major already. Um, so let's go to my second pick. So I'm gonna even though you, say what you want about this guy, because Patrick Reed, uh, Whoa. He, yeah, he's kind of a he. So he's kind of a jackass. He's known to be kind of a jackass. He, I th- I'm also pretty sure his family hates him, or he hates his family. It's one of the two. It's so makes some sense. Weird dynamic going on, but this. Is I went for the memory on this one. So obviously this is from the two the uh, 2016 Roger Cup, right? So the you know the attire itself I would say is it's crisp. You know it's pretty clean. You got some modern. Uh, you got a, like a modern modern USA 16 logo on the side. Typical crest. I I think it's decent. Um, I overall I think it's a solid look. But I I went with the memory here. Because, in my opinion, this has got to be one of the, I would say, top five most electric sporting events ever. Now, when I say that, you gotta, there's a little bit of context here. So, the 26. So, if you don't know anything about the Ryder Cup, it's the USA against Europe, uh, golfing in a match style kind of tournament, which is not how they normally do it. Um, so they always they get paired up. Like one v one, one USA guy versus one European guy, and they have teams, and it's it's a it's one of the only times besides like the Olympics that they do teams in golf. In 2016, Patrick Reed was paired up against Rory McIlroy. I think it was on day two or day three. I can't remember, but what ensued was one of the most electric sporting events that I've ever watched. The crowd was into it. Uh, they were wa- wagging wagging fingers at each other. They were saying, "How do you like that, dude?" It was electric. I still think it is like one of my favorite sporting moments ever. Just because these, you don't see guys get this level of pumped up golfing. You just outside of maybe Tiger, it, you know. Yeah, I was gonna say like Tiger. You know, when when he knows like, hey, I'm about to win another jacket or something. But, I mean, you typically don't get this type of electricity. And their back and forth was awesome. But I got to admit, obviously, USA all day, all the way. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, Patrick Reed is probably my least favorite golfer. And Rory McIlroy, I think, is my favorite golfer. So, really? it's uh, – it's yeah, it's kind of hard for me there. Like, Patrick Reed, how you were saying about Bryson, like, that dude has such a punchable face. Like, Patrick Reed is somebody that – like, I could see him dressed the oh, yeah. same – out at a bar and like just talking nonsense and like, mm-hmm. Oh, like this guy has to be taken care of, you know, like Patrick Reed, I'll be honest, man, if you're watching and I know that you are, um, I hate you. I'm, I'm just going to be honest, but the look, the look overall, very clean. If we're, mm-hmm. if we're going to stick to what it is, you know, the, the USA kind of always comes out with, with fresh, simple, clean, you know? Um, and, uh, and so I, I dig it obviously, um, but Patrick Reed, it's it's hard for me to sit here and just look at him. But he did provide a very electric golf moment. And yeah. the the back and forth between him and Rory was just incredible. 
Um, you know, so so I give you credit for the pick there. I just hate Patrick Reed. Yeah, I mean, me too. I'm not a I'm not a Patrick Reed fan. It was just it was because it was so awesome, like and just so oh, like, absolutely, memorable, dude. Like it, you just don't see this in golf, right? So again, this is like a one v one match, right? And dude, look at look at Rory just get fired up, dude. Like, I can't hear yeah. you. I can't in front of like a a packed USA crowd too, like it. Unbelievable. And then Reed goes ahead, and you'll see it here in a sec. Reed goes ahead and also sinks his putt and, like, just gives the finger wide. It's just, like, an all-time, like, and they went at this for, like, there were, like, five holes like this. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, come on, dude. That That's just, it's, it's what a moment in golf, dude. Like, yeah. it, it's just, it's legendary. It, again, not a big Patrick Reed fan, but, but. Still provided an awesome moment, yeah. so I'm um, I'm for it. I'll take yeah. it. All right, so Benny, let's go to your last pick. What do you got? <laughs> I had to go with a bit more of a satirical pick here, but I mean this one with my heart and soul because even though I love John Daly, I've never resonated with a golfer more than Happy Gilmore. Okay, I'm typically a hockey guy. Happy Gilmore is a hockey guy. I suck at golf. Originally, he sucked at golf. And then he realized that he can crush the damn ball. Okay. This is by far the best golf movie of all time and regarded as is one of the funniest and best sports movies of all time. Uh, th- this dude, I mean, is just great. And the scene that you're seeing here that you will not make this putt, you jackass, is, I mean, just hilarious. But this also leads to another scene where Happy Gilmore fights Bob Barker. Uh, I love how like on FX when they play the movie, instead of saying the price is wrong, whatever, you know, they, they change it to where he goes, the price is wrong, Bobby. And they they, like bleep it like that every time. And it kills me, dude. Uh, But just an iconic movie and, you know, a satirical funny movie about golf hadn't been done since Caddyshack. Right. So this was like, Hey man, it's about time. And the 90s Adam Sandler movies were just mm-hmm. elite. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, you know, I got to give him credit. The weird salmon pants with tennis shoes and a hockey jersey at a celebrity showcase is is just ballsy. But I dig it because it's so casual and it's definitely something I would wear. And, uh, and because I am the less experienced golf mind uh, between the two of us, you know, I had to throw something goofy out there. But I mean it. This guy deserves all the credit. So... I don't want to say that this is cheating, but it might be. I might consider it cheating. <laughs> like if I put a poll out, I I know that this is gonna get more votes, and I get it. Like I'm not like I can't dispute well, this isn't it. For the poll, this okay. Isn't for the poll, I know. But, uh, th- I know. But this is just. I'll be honest because, um, like <laughs> a lot of the golfers that I like, they look pretty damn boring and all the same. Like most of them, like they just. You know, and, and guys that, like, I really, really like, mm-hmm. you know, like, I tried finding a way to put Rocco Media on here, right? A little hometown love. Mm-hmm. He looks boring as shit every time he steps out on a golf course. Uh, th- there's, like, VJ Singh. Like, there was just a lot of guys that, like, I wanted to fit on here, but just they all look boring as hell. And there is one of your three that I wanted to put on there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it was just kind of like, oh, well, I got to figure out something else. And then... You know, I, I went to a hey, it's an all time look from old happy boy. Yeah. No, it's it's not a bad pick. It, the Bruins jersey is awesome. Um Yeah. You're gonna get it, Bobby. That, like <laughs> that it, it, what a dude, what a, that that just makes me think of like grown up. That movie just is like perfect top to bottom. Uh yeah, dude. <laughs> what what is it? Grizzly Adams was a real guy, or I forget. The, yeah, I forget what that line was. But did, did you know that guy was an actual golfer, Lee Trevino? I I learned that like yeah. I learned that like so much later after seeing that. Like I didn't. Yeah, never... and and did you know that Lee Trevino got struck by lightning on a golf course? I learned that after. Yeah, yeah. Once I figured out who that yeah, was, he, he lived through getting lightning struck on an actual golf course. So. Yeah, that guy, uh, he's, he's something else, man. Your ball struck my foot. Uh, yeah. 
All right, so we're gonna go to uh, we're gonna go to my last pick. So this is it. This I is mean, the one. Yeah, I, I, this is the pick. I sent my picks in first, so I think I one of us was gonna get this. Obviously, it had to. Yeah, so, <laughs> had so to. I I had to go with the guy that literally changed the game of golf. Like when you think golf, everyone just thinks Tiger Woods. Maybe not. Maybe if you're a kid growing up now. Maybe you don't think that, but I know that there are probably three generations that when they think golf, they think Tiger Woods because this guy, he was revolutionary. And I, I got to go with the Sunday red, the championship red, because championship red is golf. dude. It's like it's Alabama football on a golf course. It's so simple. And it, it when you see it, you know that it's there to kick your ass. Championship red is seeing literally thousands of people mob tiger as he's going down 18th fairway like it is it's just it's so iconic because he just wore it every single championship sunday and there for a long time no one could beat him he was literally just annihilating dudes like i ben i don't know if you've seen the tiger documentary it would it's yeah. phenomenal that just the one part i forget I, it was one of the u.s opens i think um, where he just he wanted to just bury Mickelson. He just wanted to get Mickelson's mind out of it, and and he pulled out his three iron and outdrove Mickelson, which yeah. And he's like, that's when I I knew I won. Like right then and there, I knew, which is crazy. Yeah. Like this dude changed the game of golf, and he he did it with like such. Which you look back at it now, it's probably. That's probably why he didn't last a little longer, plus a few other things. But he had such an aggressive swing. <laughs> he had such yeah. an aggressive swing where, I, and I think, I it just sucks that like he did get in that car accident recently. It sounds like he's golfing again, which is which is obviously great to hear. But great news, yeah, yeah. But like it, it's I I don't I don't know how as a golf fan whether or not you like him as a person. Tiger Woods makes golf more interesting. It, thousand percent yeah it, it obviously you know he's got some things against his record <laughs> right i mean but all in too all many waitresses it, yeah uh yeah and i love how like whenever all that stuff came out his thing was he would take his mistress's subway <laughs> like buddy you were the most successful golfer arguably of all time and you're bringing your girlfriend's Behind your wife's back, a five dollar foot long. That is one of the funniest damn things I've ever heard in my entire life. But uh, but I do respect Tiger, the athlete. Uh, in in how can you not? I mean, the guy really did revolutionize the game. And this fit right here, black Nike hat, black pants, and a red shirt. You knew you were messing with ten of ten, Tiger. Right? I mean, there was this was just so iconic that you knew. Anytime you saw Tiger Woods, right, you were probably in trouble. When you saw him walk out wearing this, you knew, oh, Tiger's going to have a career day and bury me in the sand bunker. Yeah. Like you just, you knew that that, that was inevitable. Um, and, and I mean, Tiger is an OG guy. Um, he's just been phenomenal every time he stepped on a golf course. Even when he slacked, it's really not that bad. We just hold him to a higher standard because he's Tiger Woods. Like, you know, and um, uh, the guy made golf a national sport again. Mm -hmm. So um, it, you got to you gotta give him his flowers, man. And, and this look is the most iconic Tiger look. Like when, when Tiger is eventually immortalized by society, right? Like these are the types of images that they're going to look to as him wearing this. So – this was like the perfect pick. This was the one I was hinting to that you stole, but mm -hmm. you didn't steal it. You just got there quicker. Mm -hmm. This was like it, anybody who saw the the uh, subject of the episode knew like, oh, well, Tiger's Tiger. black and red's going to be in there, you know? Yeah. So, um, but yeah, dude, this is the quintessential pick for best golf fits, dude. We just had to. Yeah. Um, it's funny you brought up Rocco Mediate. So this was the U.S. Open where – Tiger beat Rocco, uh, and for for those of you who don't know, Rocco Mediate, Greensburg, PA. That's where he was born. Yeah, so local right, guy, right down the road, right. Um, they went, dude. They went. So obviously they golf for four days, right? 
then they play an they play a playoff round, another eighteen hole playoff round, and then Tiger ended up winning on the first sudden death hole. The entire time he was on one knee, so he played five rounds of golf on a bad knee where his swing is already so violent, and he still ended up winning a U.S. Open against a guy that just like against anyone else, Rocco would have like probably run away with it. But like, because he oh, was just having but, that sort of day, you know, like it, it's it's like if someone in football goes on a great run but they lose to Tom Brady, it's like, well, I mean, what do you expect? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that was great what you did, and we respect and love what you did. But at the end of the day, I don't really give you too much crap for losing because at least it was the Tom Brady. Tiger Woods is that kind of guy. Mm-hmm. Hundred percent. Yeah, and like it just even part of me. I remember watching that like with my parents, and I was like, oh shit, this guy. He's from Greens. He's from Greensburg. Part of me, I, I was kind of torn because I was like, it'd be great to see the guy from Greensburg won yeah. one. But like, yeah, how can you root against Tiger, dude? Like, and, and especially like you said, like with what he was coming over injury wise, was like, dude, like this is you are watching history right now. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, dude, that was that was awesome. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna go to. I got just two honorable mentions. Uh, the one I don't John think it's a, I don't yeah. So I'm gonna start actually with the one on the right. Um, I just had to put my guy Tommy Fleetwood on there. He's a guy that I just I need to win a major. I just need Tommy Fleetwood to win a major. Uh, golf Jesus over here. Um, and then John Daly again. I just I had to throw him on here because the Astro pants are just fantastic. So like, like yeah. I mean. The guy is a lightning rod every time he steps on a golf course, bro. Like, just by his looks, by his demeanor. In any interview clip you get with him, like, will be postable, will go viral. Like, just because he's one of those polarizing, like, just wild, unhinged dudes that you got to see what he's doing at all times on and off a golf course. Yeah. All right. So, just to recap, uh, you got the narc, (laughs) and then you got Ricky and Adam Sandler. So, not bad outside of the narc. I, now the narc was wearing something pretty cool, so I'll, I'll give you that. And he wasn't wearing he had a good fit. He had a good hat. fit. So yeah, he wasn't. He yeah. didn't look like an Irish car driver, like an Irish professional driver or whatever. <laughs> I don't even know who wears those hats, like because it's not a Peaky Blinder hat. Like it's like no, it's like a Kangol hat, but it but it was Puma brand. Yeah, but so, the only like, person that can do that is Bruce Arians, dude. Literally, no yeah. one else can do that. Yeah, Bruce Arians, um, old black guys who own barber shops, I think, uh, and, and they got to have like the bowling shirts too. You know, like the button-up shirts. And uh, Bryson is just neither of those things. Yeah. So I mean, well, whatever. Yeah, dude. He wasn't wearing it here. So yeah. yeah. Um, and then yeah, Ricky and Happy Gilmore, obviously legends. Eat- uh, like I said, I think Happy's kind of cheating, but I'll leave that there. Um, and then, and then we got Grip It, Rip It, and Sip It. John Daly, the man, the myth, the legend, John. pulling off the Rex Quando look, but better. Um, and then we got uh, Patrick Reed again, more for more for the actual moment in sports and the actual look, but still electric nonetheless. Still a clean look. Yeah. Um, and then ending it with Tiger. I mean, you have iconic to. Tiger. You have to. Yeah. So, um. Ben, that was a good one. Definitely a little different than what we normally do, but I'm glad we switched it up, man. I mean, I, I golf is one that like I really don't think we've ever hit like in any capacity. So I'm really happy we were able to get there and drive it home. So I, uh, you know, look the golf puns, buddy. They they won't stop. So, but I really think that this show was a hole in one. So I'm really happy that we got there and. Uh, and you know, I'm I'm looking forward to to hopefully maybe hitting it again, maybe the worst golf outfits eventually, because there are honestly way more candidates for that than than the best. So oh, yeah. yeah, man. Oh, yeah. But yeah, dude, this this was great. I think we we killed it. Yeah, as as always. I mean, slight work it off, dude. It's, it's uh, it's just easy at this point. Uh, Benny, as always, I appreciate you. Thanks for coming along this ride with me, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Always, brother. It's been The Vault. Uh, the show that takes a look back at some of the best and uh, worst looks in sports. 
Uh, this will drop on Friday, just like every other Friday. Go like, subscribe, tell a friend, be a friend, that whole shebang. I'm not going to go through all that because you know. So, appreciate it, guys. See you next week. Peace.